My dear students, today we are going to talk about certain topics where we have got a limited time for one, one hour. So I would like to go through all that quickly. So just stay with me. So first of all, we talk about complications of sinusitis. Next. Well, everybody knows what sinusitis is. But just to remind you, sinusitis is inflammation of sinus mucosa. When the infection is spreads to the walls of the sinuses or beyond, then we call it a complication. Next. Now, as far as the types of sinusitis is concerned, we can subdivide them into local complications, orbital complications, intracranial complications, descending infections and focal infections. Now, among all these topics, local complications can be mucosal or pyocele and mucus retention cyst, osteomyelitis of the frontal bone and maxilla, whereas orbital complications can be very many, uh, uh, such as subperiosteal abscess, orbital cellulitis, orbital abscess, and orbital apex syndrome and so on. Intracranial complications can be starting from meningitis. We talk about extradural abscess, subdural abscess, brain abscess, cavernous sinus thrombophlebitis. As far as descending infections are concerned, a spread of infection to the neighboring or adjacent areas, such as the pharynx or the middle ear or the larynx is included among those descending infections. Focal infections is a spread of infection to distant areas of the body through blood or lymphatics. Next. As far as pathogenesis of uh, the spread of complications concerned, there can be direct spread, venous spread, lymphatic spread, and perineural spread. Next. Local complications such as mucosal of paranasal sinuses, it's a very important complication. It's very common in cases of frontal sinusitis, but it can occur in the ethmoidal sinuses as well. It's due to the blockage of either the ostium of the frontal sinus, that the sinus uh, swells up in the form of a mucosal, or it's just a, a blockage of a mucous gland duct, which gives rise to this kind of complication. Next. Frontal sinus mucous seal usually presents in the supramedial quadrant of the orbit, and it commonly occurs as a result of obstruction to the frontal ostium due to chronic disease. Symptoms can be supraorbital swelling, usually above and lateral to the medial canthus, and there is diplopia, sometimes headache, and proptosis, and swelling is usually cystic and non-tender, and eggshell crackling may be elicited. Thank you. Next. Investigations of a frontal sinus mucus seal can be through plain x-ray of the sinuses, we show cloudiness of the affected frontal sinus with loss of scalloping, and CT scan of the osteometal complex in uh, sinuses, and that we can also do diagnostic nasal endoscopy. Next. Treatment of frontal sinus mucosal, endoscopic sinus surgery with frontal recess clearance and uncapping of the mucosal is the treatment of choice. Alternatively, alternatively, external frontoethmoidectomy, which is length heart operation or osteoplastic flap operation can also be done. In case of pyocel, a course of antibiotics should be given prior to surgery. Next. Now osteomyelitis and maxilla is more often seen in infants and children because of the presence of a spongy bone in the entry of all of the maxilla. 
and its clinical features, erythema, swelling of cheek, liver, lid, edema, purulent nasal discharge and fever. Subperiosteal abscess followed by fistula may form in the infraorbital region, alveolus or in zygote. Treatment is large doses of antibiotics and drainage of abscess and sequestra removal. Next. Similarly, osteomyelitis of frontal bone is often seen in adults as frontal sinus is not developed in infants and children. It may result from acute infection of frontal sinus either directly or through the venous spread. Now, the pus which forms externally under the periosteum forms a soft doughy swelling, which we call pot's puffy tumor, although it's not a tumor, but because it's, it looks like a tumor, uh, clinically, we call it pot's puffy tumor. Or internally, it may present as an extradural abscess treatment of osteomyelitis of frontal bone is large doses, doses of antibiotics again, and drainage of abscess and refining of frontal sinus through its floor. Sometimes requires removal of sequestra and necrotic bone by raising a scalp flap through a coronal incision. Next. Similarly, Similarly, orbital complications can also arise in different forms like orbital cellulitis, osteitis of the bones of the orbit, or periosteal, subperiosteal abscess, or orbital abscess, or cavernous sinus thrombophilibitis in the end. Next. Now, according to Chandler, it's a Chandler's classification of orbital complications of chronic complication of sinusitis. Now, inflammatory edema, which is preceptal lid edema, no limitation in ocular movement of, or visual change in this, which is the simplest form of orbital complication, whereas next to it is orbital cellulitis, which is more complicated thing and it causes diffuse orbital infection and inflammatory with the um, inflammation without abscess formation. Subperiosteal abscess is another serious complication due to the collection of pus under the periosteum uh, of the orbit uh, between the periosteum and the lamina papyracea impaired extraocular movement occur in it. Orbital abscess, which is discrete pus collection in orbital tissues, proptosis and chemosis with ophthalmoplegia and decreased vision. Kiwana science thrombosis is the fifth and the most dangerous complication, which causes bilateral eye findings and worsening of all other previously described findings. Next. As I told you, it is, here is a picture of preceptal uh, inflammatory edema of lids, uh, which shows edema in the right eye and mild proptosis. It occurs in about 70 to 80% of cases, but does not affect the vision. Next. Whereas orbital cellulitis, when pus breaks through the periosteum, and finds its way into the orbit, it is spreads between the orbital fat, extraocular muscles, vessels, and nerves. It causes lived edema, exothelmus, chemosis of conjunctiva, and restricted movements of eyeball with partial or total loss of vision. Patient may run high fever. Orbital cellulitis is potentially dangerous because of the risk of meningitis and cavernous sinus thrombosis. Next. Well, this is the third more dangerous kind of inflammation and complication in the form of subperiosteal abscess. One can see pus coming out of the orbit and it causes proptosis um, and typically 
the pus collects between the lamina papyracea and the medial periorbital uh, structures. From the maxillary sinus abscess forms in the floor of the orbit and displaces the eyeball up, upwards and forwards, whereas from the frontal sinus abscess uh, displaces the eyeball uh, above and behind the medial canthus, displaces the eyeball downwards and laterally. Next. Orbital abscess is a very serious complication. It means that pus has collected inside the eye uh, orbital contents and it gives rise to proptosis and loss of vision in the end. Diagnosis can be done by CT scan or ultrasound of the orbit. Treatment is heavy doses of antibiotics and drainage of the abscess and that of the sinus by doing an ethmoidectomy or trephination of frontal sinus. Next. Other complications also there, which involve the apex of the orbit, uh, giving rise to complications of um, optic nerve involvement, uh, giving rise to uh, loss of vision and blindness. Next. Well, intracranial complications, one can subdivide uh, from the frontal ethmoid sphenoid sinuses. They're closely related to anterior cranial fossa and infection from these can cause following complications like meningitis and encephalitis, extradural abscess, subdural abscess, brain abscess, and cavernous sinus thrombosis. Next. Well, cavernous sinus thrombosis, uh, its etiology is, uh, it comes from the paranasal sinuses and orbital complications from these sinuses uh, can cause thrombophlebitis of the cavernous sinus. Whereas it causes proptosis, chemosis, progressive ophthalmoplegia, and complete loss of vision. As you can see in the picture, it's a serious complication. It can also involve the third fourth and sixth cranial nerves causing paralysis of thelmoplegia. Well, pupil becomes dilated and fixed and congestion of optic disc with diminution of vision and there is loss of sensation in the distribution of the fifth cranial nerve also. Treatment of cavernous sinus thrombosis is IV antibiotics and attention to the focus in infection, drainage of infected ethmoid or sphenoid sinus. Next. There's a picture of the cavernous sinus thrombosis involving the cavernous sinus. Next. Now one can ask, one can ask about the differences of between orbital cellulitis and cavernous sinus thrombosis, which whereas orbital cellulitis is commonly in ethmoidal in origin, whereas cavernous sinus thrombosis can arise due to disease in the nose or the sinuses or orbit or ear or pharynx. Now, onset is slow in case of orbital cellulitis, whereas in cavernous sinus thrombosis, onset is abrupt with high fever and chills with near signs of toxemia, edema of lips, eyelids, chemosis and proptosis. Whereas uh, laterality orbital cellulitis involves one eye, whereas cavernous sinus thrombosis is a more serious complication. It involves both eyes usually. Next. Descending, descending infections such as otitis media, pharyngitis and tonsillitis, and persistent laryngitis and tracheobronchitis can also occur due to uh, complications of sinusitis, whereas focal infection may act as focus of infection, causing polyarthritis, tenosynovitis, fibrositis, and certain skin diseases. Next. Thank you very much.